You think Einstein walked around thinking everyone was a bunch of dumb shits? You know, we see, we see the finished product, but what no one got to see was the years you sort of struggled in New York yeah. and how you thought you were going to figure it out versus how it played out. You know, it's funny, you, you talk about how you didn't fit in commercials and you didn't go here. Uh, you were on Saturday Night Live for a year. Yes, which I've been I thinking didn't about that know. a lot lately. I really? know. I didn't even know it. Vow of silence reimposed until next year. Hey, wait, one more thing. Live from New York, it's Saturday Night Do you remember your audition? I do. I Tell was, me about that. I was I'm, very I'm fortunate fascinated in by that, that Anthony Michael Hall and I have remained close friends low these many years. We were both put to task by a director friend of ours to remember what and how did we wind up on that show and what was that year like. Yeah. 1985-86, an uh, important year in your life. Mm. You joined the cast of Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Something a lot of people don't really remember, but uh, how was that year and how was that experience for you? It was the first year that Lauren Michaels came back. I went in and auditioned. Anthony Michael Hall was already on the show. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you very much. Uh, for openers, I must say that I was a bit confused, and I don't want to say that I didn't enjoy Mr. Buckley's book, but it did seem to have a certain, uh, certain <laughs> but quality to it that kind of detracted from the brilliant prose. Michael? Oh. Mike, you're totally missing the point, which is, of course, <laughs> Yeah. But I was so curious about how you ended up in that audition. I came through the, the Weird Science Country Academy. A, a bunch of us had met up on this, uh, you know, John Hughes right. films, and I was kind of like, oh, wow, I had a part in that, and I was starting to get a little uh, notice. And then Michael Hall was doing all this bigger stuff and turning down huge stuff and making creative decisions about what he wanted the next chapter of his career to be and we become friends. Uh -huh. So he, in a way, was my first John Favreau. He was someone who said to me, I'm gonna go do SNL, I'm gonna get you an audition, and I bet you're gonna get yourself on the show too. And they'll be lucky to have us. So what, do you remember the audition? Yeah, I did some really dumb stuff. I like pulled my shirt over my head and did some sort of like uh, bodega running character. Um, I did another guy, a British guy, who all he wanted to do was put a piece of tape on your head. It was, it was really weird, super avant-garde stuff. I've never done impressions. I, I have some respect for people who do them. It, it's a skill, I guess, if you want to develop that skill. You see how we have contempt for things that are out of our reach? I guess I'm not a really good impressionist. <laughs> it's all garbage unless I have a sense of it. If I'm not mistaken, there was some people at a table and I came in and it was my moment and I did some stuff and I heard some chuckles and there was some head scratching and I was like, well, that was kind of fun. And then a couple days later, I, I, was, I was told that I, that I would be a not ready for primetime player. You did one season of SNL? Yes, arguably the worst season in its history. <laughs> they also said I was the worst cast member, but come on, there's a lot of competition for that. <laughs> I, I remember that season, that was like you, was it, was it Anthony, Anthony Michael, Michael Hall? Hall. Yeah. Uh, Damon Wayans was on it. Uh, Randy Quaid? Yes! Yeah, it was not John Lovitz. Good morning, Skip. Merry Christmas! Yeah, big deal. <laughs> well, come on, Skip. That's not the Christmas spirit. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it seems around here like the only person who cares about anybody else, Hildy. Mom and Dad, I love you! Oh, honey! <laughs> Did you write anything that ever got on? Or? The I... only thing I wrote that made it almost close to air was this ridiculous sketch called Suitcase Boy came out with a suitcase zipped up around my neck and said a bunch of non sequiturs. It was so not funny, <laughs> except to me and my weirdo friends, and I was literally sweating mortar shells. So I present to you Robert Downey doing a, um, what are you gonna do? Oh, a, a confrontational monologue. I know why whales beach themselves. Spider-Man told me! Life is an emergency, and my books are overdue. No, thanks to you! <laughs> I'm gonna knock you over. You will cushion my fall. You'll go, ow! Ow! Where's my close-up? My, hey. <laughs> 
And were you a fan of it before the, like, the of course, Belushi era? Of course, I grew up on it. So what did you think when that happened? Did you think like, no, now I'm gonna have Belushi's much. career, I'm gonna have Chevy Chase's career? No, I learned so much in that year about what I wasn't. I was not somebody who was going to come up with the catchphrase. I was not somebody who was going to do impressions. I was very ill-suited for rapid fire sketch comedy. I was not of that ilk of the groundlings or anything. I'd never been part of any improv group. So I was kind of like, wow, this seems like, this seems really hard and like a lot of work. I really learned a lot, really learned a lot. It was also just crazy. I mean, I guess I was like 19 or 20, I don't, I don't know, I forget. And he was younger, <laughs> still is. It was, it was tough and I learned a lot and I don't complain on film sets nearly as much as I should because of that experience. Do you remember getting fired? First of all, God damn it, I wasn't fired, Sam. Okay. I don't know what, you know, Wait, I everyone fired. else is fired. Everyone else was fired and I said, you know what? You're all fired and I quit. <laughs> you know, we'll have to ask Lauren. Maybe he didn't want me back, I don't know. But I think I was off and running and I was going to do some other movies. I've always felt more comfortable uh, out west. So it's, it's like I said to him, I said flat out, Lauren, can we move the show to California? Because that's going to work better for me. And, and look at us here now. Look at us here oh now. Boy. Come on. We yeah, right? Something right. First alum. First, you are the first alum, a Saturday Night Live alum, to be nominated for an Oscar for a lead role. Real? That's right. Yeah, wow. that's, a good, that's some good trip. Everyone on Saturday Night Live loves name dropping you. Like, oh, you know, Robert Downey Jr. was a cast member. Well, oh, there. God. Maybe I'll drop back by one day. I would still say, to this day that there's not a more exciting 90 minutes you can have, whether you are any good or not. It's just amazing. For me, being young and, uh, and kind of whatever, um, I was like, this is just a blast. Like you're in a caveman outfit and you're running to go from this set to that set and change into a spaceman outfit and you like bump into David Bowie who's like standing by a monitor because him and, and, and Lauren are buddies and you just go like, oh, coolest. Saturday night ever <laughs> and they be like well done you know or whatever <laughs> right. in the 90 minutes moment you get such validation because it's such a difficult thing to try to pull off and it's so miraculous that for 40 whatever 44 yeah. years whatever it is now they've kept pulling it off but you get a lot of cred just for being able to even participate in that level of real-time stress and excitement